The way you approach an object for sculpting will either make your job as easy as it can be, kind of like the path of least resistance to a successful sculpture, or it can make your job an uphill battle. I recommend breaking down your approach into three points. First, reference. No matter what you're sculpting, you need multiple sources of reference to guide you along. Unfortunately, humans, at least none that I know of, have the brain capacity to be an expert in everything, despite how many times we see everyday stuff. For example, I've probably seen thousands of dogs in my lifetime, but when I try to draw one from memory, it's not as impressive as I want it to be. There's too many details that we take for granted. At best, my memory is a blurry understanding of canine anatomy, and I consider myself to have a fairly photographic memory. But after a decade of being a serious artist, this holds true for everything I've ever sculpted. The second aspect of approach is the input mesh. Now, I wouldn't say there's necessarily a wrong input mesh, but depending on the object or sculpting task at hand, some input meshes get you where you wanna go faster than others. So let's say we're sculpting a rock. That's something we can start out with a simple primitive like a cube or sphere because it's not a complex structure with extremities. But if we're sculpting a tree, which is a complex shape comprised of a network of tubular structures, we can fast track our shape by using the skin modifier. So while you can sculpt a tree from a sphere, it's likely not the most efficient way to go about it. The third aspect to think about is the correct progression, which is from broad to detailed. It's a strong temptation to start detailing prematurely. So if you're not already in the habit, I encourage you to get in the habit of progressively refining your entire structure in stages. So with these principles in mind to drive my workflow, I like to start by first gathering my reference images, like here in my browser, I have three jack-o'-lantern images, and I want to download them, of course, the biggest size possible, because the more resolution you have, the more information and detail you have to help you as you go. I just need to grab this last one. And with those downloaded, I'll open up Photoshop for the purpose of combining my reference images into one image. And so out of the three, I think this one's my favorite because it's got a real unique pumpkin shape. It's kind of elongated. And so I'll set this as my primary reference and then take my other two, select the region that I want, copy that and paste it on top of the other. And then we'll push that off into the negative space. It also helps that my primary image is the biggest of the three. Then grab this other one, do the same thing, copy it, paste it on top of my primary, kind of move it out of the way of the primary. And now I just need to save this, whatever your preference is, JPEG, PNG, something optimized that can easily be opened with Blender. And I'll just go to my reference directory and I'll save over this one, jack.png. Okay, so with my references now combined into one image, I'll jump over to Blender and get this set up for sculpting. Maybe make the properties panel a little bit wider drag up a new window split, and then make this bottom window the UV image editor, and then open that image we just created. And since it is one image, this is all we need to open. I don't need to open multiple images and switch between them throughout my workflow. There's nothing wrong with having multiple images. I just find that I can work faster having combined them. And now we're ready to begin sculpting. I'm going to time-lapse this jack-o'-lantern and make it available for you to watch if you so choose along with several recommended sculpting lessons from the CGC library. This all should be enough to guide you as you sculpt your three objects. So have fun this week and get very, very comfortable with digital sculpting.